بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام الأتمان الأكملان على خير خلق الله أجمعين وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهديه واستنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وأرنا الحق حقا ورزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا ورزقنا اجتنابه وجعلنا ممن يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه آمين يا رب العالمين وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, I start by thanking uh, our brothers uh, who organize this uh, Sahaba Academy uh, for uh, hosting such uh, important uh, lectures on such important topics. And so there's no doubt that, uh, you know, if there was anything for us Muslims to be standing up against and challenging and combating in this day and age, in terms of ideologies, in terms of uh, doubts, concerning one's Iman, there's no doubt that the top priority should be uh, combating uh, atheism. Uh, and especially uh, atheism as it is being uh, promoted uh, in this day and age. And so, you know, uh, today's deviation in the world uh, is different than how it was in the past. Uh, in the past, we could say that the paganism of Jahiliya was one of idolatry. It was idol worship. Uh, as for the paganism of today, we can easily say that it is uh, that of ideologies, not of ide idolatry as much, but more of ideologies. And if we were to think about it, there are there are a lot of parallels between uh, you know the kufr of today and that of the past, even though it is different. So uh, in the past, you know, as as mentioned uh, by by one of the companions, uh, he says that uh, we used to worship an idol. And if we found one that was better than it, then we would throw that idol away and start worshiping the other idol. The fitna with ideologies today resembles the shirk of Quraysh in the past. And so they move from one ideology to another. When they're no longer satisfied with, with one ideology, they move on to to another, hopping from one to the next, and the whole entire time rejecting the truth and abandoning revelation from Allah and trying to demand everything from rationality. Um, now, the atheism of today, how is it different uh, than the atheism of the past? Or I guess the question is, um, what is the narrative of uh, atheists today that they are putting forward uh, that is different than the atheism of, let's say, uh, 20, 30 years ago, or 40 years ago, or 50 years ago? Basically, what we have today, and this is actually uh, it, it, it comes in the form of a movement known as the New Atheist Movement. The New Atheist Movement. And so this movement, uh, it started to gain momentum uh, after 9-11, where they were trying to say that, you know, um, religion is the source of all evil, and so we need to combat religion and we need to completely destroy religion. And uh, basically 
what they tried to use was, uh, you know, uh, the latest scientific advancements and technological advancements that that you know we have witnessed. And so, basically, um, basically. Uh, uh, this modern form of atheism, uh, their main focus is to uh, basically uh, annihilate religion. And that's why many, you know, Western thinkers and writers have actually said that uh, you know, this new atheist movement is actually uh, an extremist movement. It is an extremist movement that has signs of intellectual terrorism. And so it is based on abuse, verbal abuse, vicious attacks and tactics, especially that which concerns the foundations of the Islamic faith and the sanctities of Muslims. And so we find that this new atheist movement uh, uh, has held hands with uh, Islamophobes throughout uh, the world. We find that they are in bed with uh, common, uh, uh, very well-known Islamophobes. And so Islamophobia, we could say that, you know, this is all one group. Islamophobia, new atheism, uh, the worldwide war on terror, and so on and so forth. And so uh, all of this, it goes to show us that, uh, you know, these new atheists, uh, they do not represent an intellectual movement that presents uh, intellectual arguments disproving the existence of Allah, but rather, it is a movement based on emotions and ill sentiments, showing their hatred and their animosity for Islam and Muslims. Now, I'm just going to uh, mention uh, perhaps uh, two points uh, that center around the narrative of uh, the new atheists today. And what we will do, inshallah ta'ala, is we will uh, provide our response. You know, what is our response as Muslims? The first uh, point that I wanted to mention is that uh, the atheists of today, they try to make it seem as if, uh, as if the default position of humanity has always been uh, has always been denial of the existence of God. So uh, what they do is they come to you and they ask you. Uh, they come to you and ask you, what is the evidence that God exists? And so, right from the very beginning we need to understand why they do this. They do this in order to make it seem as if, as if uh, uh, religion is not the asl, it is not the, the default position, but rather it is something that came, it is something that came and it was something invented and before that, no one believed in God. And, and so the default position is that we are all atheists. And so the way we respond to this is by throwing the question back onto them and saying, no, the question should be, the question should be, what reasons do we have? What reasons do we have to not believe in the existence of God? 
what reasons do we have to not believe in God's existence? And so when you put the question in this way, it takes them back and you know they, they really uh, end up not really giving you any answer. They're not able to give you any answer. And that's because you find that the reasons for why people reject the existence of God are usually not based on evidence. It has nothing to do with evidence, very little. Very little does it have to do with evidence. The majority of people who become atheists, it's usually something else. Like, you know, something emotional, something, uh, you know, something that happened to them in their lives, or they see suffering happening around them. It's not based on evidence. It's, it's only based on other reasons. Having said that, we can also add to this, can also add here, that the default position of all humanity from the beginning of time has been to believe in the existence of a creator. It has always been to believe in the existence of a creator. And atheism as we know it today, as a widespread phenomenon, is, is something that only came into being in the last few hundred years. Before that, you could rarely find anyone who did not believe in the existence of a creator. And so that is sufficient evidence to say that humans by their fitrah, humans by their natural disposition have been believers in God have been believers in God and the existence of God. Now, what they believe about God will differ. You know, who they believe to be God, who they believe to be the creator, is he one, does he have partners? That is where they differed. That is where they differed. And that's why uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he sent the prophets and the messengers throughout history, he did not send a single prophet or messenger to preach to the people and to try to convince them that God exists. And so what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us in Surah Ibrahim? That one of the things that the messengers said to their people One of the things that they, they said to them uh, was قالت لهم رسولهم أفي الله شك فاطر السماوات والأرض Their messenger said to them Is there any doubt about Allah the creator of the heavens and the earth? Do you have any doubt? Meaning that the prophets and the messengers were all sent to people who acknowledged Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's existence. The issue was not, does God exist or does he not exist? That was not the issue. The issue was their shirk. The issue was them associating partners with Allah, them having a distorted and wrong perception about who Allah is. Otherwise, recognizing the creator that the creator exists this is something that uh, all human beings recognized and it was only at rare cases where you found people who uh, rejected the existence of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or a creator uh, a creator of the heavens and the earth um, and so uh, you know, that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the prophets and the messengers to call the people to recognize Allah's oneness. To call the people to recognize that, uh, to recognize who Allah is, who the creator is, and to worship him alone without associating any partners with him. 
Um, the second thing that I wanted to address is basically today's atheists, uh, their main weapon that they will use and they will come to us with uh, in trying to prove uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not exist, their main weapon that they will use is science. And, and so the atheists of today, they rely heavily on the scientific method. And this is what distinguishes the new atheist movement to you know, other atheists of the past. Other atheists of the past would build their arguments more on philosophy. So philosophical reasons for why God does not exist. And that's why you know, uh, we find that most of the atheists of the 19th century uh, and the 20th century, they were philosophers. You know, some of the big uh, atheists who were known for, for preaching atheism, they were philosophers. The atheists of today, many of them are scientists. And so, Basically, they believe that science has answered the question of whether God exists or not. And this is their narrative. This is their narrative today, that science has finally answered the question of whether God exists or not, because we have advanced so much in different scientific fields, and especially in uh, astrophysics and astronomy, and we have explored the entire universe. This is what they say. They say, we have explored the entire universe and we don't find any existence of God. So when an atheist today comes to you and says to you, prove to me that God exists, what they mean is, give me evidence from science that God exists. This is what they mean. This is what they mean. And so, if you were to come to these people and say, I have evidence, and you, you tell them, for example, uh, you know, I have evidence from logical arguments, or, uh, you know, from revelation, etc. They'll dismiss it. Why? Because it's not scientific evidence for them. They want something they could see, something they could touch, something they could sense. And so the, 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 uh, the scientific method is where you have an uh, where you you have a hypothesis and you say you put it to the test so for them for the new atheists their hypothesis and they they refer to it like this they say they call it the god hypothesis so they say uh, we have you know this is the hypothesis that there is a god okay let's look at the evidences and they go through scientific evidence and they, they see that, you know, there's no evidence to prove God exists. Therefore, they say, therefore, God does not exist. This is what they say. And this is nothing new. This is nothing new. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us examples of how the kuffar would treat the signs and the proofs that the prophets and the messengers would bring and how instead of looking into these signs, into these ayat, and contemplating how convincing they are, what, what would they say? They would say, no, we want other evidence. 
We want something we could see. We want something we could touch that is observable in nature. Because according to them, that is the only way to prove for certain that what the prophets are claiming is the truth. And they also said, if you bring us these evidences, then we will believe on the spot. And so, for example, uh, what did uh, Musa say? وَإِذْ قُلْتُمْ يَا مُوسَى لَنْ نُؤْمِنَ لَكَ حَتَّى نَرَى اللَّهَ جَهْرَةً And remember when you said, Bani Israel, when you said, O oh Musa, we will never believe in you until we see Allah with our own eyes. It's not evidence that they wanted. It was just stubbornness, arrogance. Also, what did they say to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? وَقَالُوا لَنْ نُؤْمِنَ لَكَ حَتَّى تَفْجُرَ لَنَا مِنَ الْأَرْضِ يَنْبُوعَ أَوْ تَكُونَ لَكَ جَنَّةٌ مِنْ نَخِيلٍ وَعِنَبٍ فَتُفَجِّرَ الْأَنْهَارُ خِلَالَهَا تَفْجِيرَ أَوْ تُسْقِطَ السَّمَاءَ كَمَا زَعَمْتَ عَلِينَا كِسَفَا أَوْ تَأْتِيَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةِ قَبِيلًا And this is the point here. They said to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that we will not believe in you until, and they listed their, they, 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 they listed their demands. They said, until you cause a spring to gush forth from the earth for us, or until you have a garden of palm trees and vineyards and cause rivers to flow abundantly in it, or you cause the sky to fall upon us in pieces as you have claimed, or, he said, or bring Allah and the angels before us face to face. If you do that, we will believe. Let us see Allah. Let us see the angels face to face. Then we will believe. What we learn from all of this is that such people are not really looking for proof in order to believe. But rather, these are mere excuses for not believing and submitting to the truth. Which is why Allah tells us, that even if he was to send a book that they could touch and read from, they still would not believe. Had we sent down to you a revelation, a book in writing, that they were to touch it with their own hands, the disbelievers would still have said, this is nothing but pure magic. So an important question here is, why is it that Allah did not send us material evidence, something observable that is according to the scientific method? When we say scientific method, what we mean is, that we have this material world that we live in and the way to prove things in this material world around us is through our senses that which we can observe so our sight our smell our touch um, data that we can collect from observation and then make calculations all of this is based on the material world that we live in. Why did Allah not show us the angels, for example? Why did Allah not show himself to us? So that we could observe that, yes, you exist, O Allah. The answer is very simple. We human beings have been made distinct and unique from all other creatures by our ability to choose what we see as being right based on our fitrah and our intellect. And so if Allah's existence was based on observable evidence such that we can see Allah directly, there would no longer be any function for our intellect and free will. If Allah showed himself to us not a single human being 
would be able to deny his existence. They would all be forced to believe without any choice. Without any choice. And so there would be no free will anymore. Instead, what they would say is, why did you force us to believe? And this is why it's too late to believe or repent uh, at the moment of death. When you see the angels coming to take away your soul, it's too late. Why? Because now you see the angels. You see them. And you see you know, life after death, or you see the akhirah, uh, something you disbelieved in your whole life. And you had the free will to believe in your whole life. Now, you have no choice. You have to believe. You could see it before your eyes. So this is why Allah did not send this kind of direct, observable evidence to prove the world of the unseen to prove the world of the unseen. And so science has its place. And its place is this material observable world that we live in. There is another world out there and that is the unseen, the ghayb. Science has no place to prove the existence or non-existence of what exists in the unseen, unobservable, non-material world. It's that simple. It is this simple. And so this is what we need to, you know, uh, we, we need to understand and really make the atheists to understand that our position regarding that which we cannot see is that Science has no, no place in it. And so how do we prove, how do we prove, uh, you know, what we cannot see, the, the ghaib, how can we prove it? There has to be a way to prove it. So the atheist cannot say, I'm not going to believe in it because there's no way to prove it. No, we do have evidence. And this brings us to the topic of epistemology or nadariyat uh, al-ma'rifa, where, you know, uh, what is considered evidence? Uh, how can we know that something is real? And in epistemology, they tell us that there is the scientific method, but then there are also other methods at arriving at the truth of something. So it's not only through science that we learn about the realities of things. And this is also what we need to make very clear to the atheists of today. Because the atheists of today, they rely so much on science that they dismiss any other kind of evidence. And this is why the new atheists are known as uh, believers in scientism. Scientism is the belief that the only way to prove anything is through science and a scientific method. And scientism is something shunned upon. It is something that even many scientists say we don't believe in. But it is something that the new atheists, they believe in. So naturally, such people, they will not believe in anything called the world of the unseen because they cannot see it, they cannot observe it. To the point where some of them are even trying to prove things that cannot be proven through science. So for example, we all recognize we human beings have a conscious this consciousness the human conscious and the soul and these human feelings they are trying to prove the existence of the soul for example and human conscious 
through science without realizing that this is also from the ghaib. This is also from the unseen. So how can we prove uh, how can we prove the reality of things that we cannot see? Very simple. Uh, basically, when a prophet or a messenger comes with a claim, he is coming to us with a report. He is coming to us with, you know, a claim. How do we verify that his claim is true or not? Basically, we apply the same rules that we would apply to anyone who comes to us with a claim. Is this person trustworthy? Is he reliable? Is he known to lie? And we look at his character. So, you know, this is how we judge whether a prophet or a messenger is, is truthful or not. Other examples are logical evidences to prove, um, to prove uh, the existence of Allah, for example. So some things, some things regarding the world of the unseen, we can prove through human logic and other things we cannot. So this is also something important to remember that we Muslims, we do rely on the aql, but we understand that it has limits. So the human aql uh, proves certain things from the world of the unseen, like the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, uh, life after death. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given logical arguments in the Quran to prove that you know, he can bring life after death. He can resurrect us. You know, throughout the Quran, we, we find Allah giving us arguments uh, to disprove the claim that, you know, once we die, we are finished and, you know, we are dust and bones and there's no life after this. So through logic, we can prove certain things, but certain things of the unseen, we cannot prove through logic. For example, what exists exactly uh, in the next world? Uh, Jannah, the hellfire, exactly what will happen on the day of judgment, even what happens in the grave, for example. Uh, these things, uh, human logic has no place to, to try to prove that these things exist. For this, we have, we rely on the wahi, the revelation, and only the revelation. Only the revelation. And so we have this information coming to us from Allah. There's no way for the human, human intellect to, to try to prove uh, these things from the world of the unseen. Um, And so based on this, um, we can see how uh, revelation is a valid, al-wahi is a valid and true source of evidence to prove anything related to the world of the unseen. And that the world of the unseen, uh, when it is based on authentic you know, sources, and that being the wahi, uh, us believing in the world of the unseen is not that we are blindly following or we have blind faith without being convinced logically about the truth of it. And so, um, so this is how we can prove that uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists and defeating and responding to the uh, the atheist narrative concerning how to prove the existence of Allah. Um,
And so these are the main points concerning uh, the atheist narrative of today. Uh, and, you know, this is how we as Muslims should be responding, uh, that our faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in our deen, because the new atheists are attacking our deen, not just our belief in Allah's existence. Otherwise, you know, all religions believe in the creator, in the existence of the creator. But their attack is on Islam uh, in particular, uh, ignoring other religions and focusing their attention uh, on Islam. Uh, and so we Muslims need to be, uh, need to be aware of uh, such movements and uh, you know, uh, what are their motives and what are they exactly calling to? And we need to equip ourselves and our youth with the necessary tools to respond. We need to equip them with the necessary tools to respond. And I will quickly conclude, uh, I will quickly conclude here by mentioning that, uh, you know, we are living in times like never before. Uh, in the past, it was unimaginable that uh, Muslim youth would uh, start doubting uh, their deen and especially uh, the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is because, you know, it was possible in the past to uh, give your children a, a conservative upbringing where you um, give them a good environment where they uh, learn the deen and they are protected from the outside world. But that is no longer the case today with you know, the internet that we have and social media and uh, basically where they have access to the outside world and all the dangerous uh, ideologies and attacks against Islam they have it accessible at the tips of their fingers. And so this shows us the importance of, uh, you know, focusing on building the Iman of our children and giving them a solid foundation, giving them a solid foundation uh, in order to repel uh, any doubts that come their way in the future. And this, the only way to do this is by educating them and uh, educating them on the basics of our deen and how, you know, our deen is based on, uh, you know, uh, submission. Our deen is based on submission. Uh, and this is something that, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the early generations of Muslims, the Salaf, this is something they understood very clearly that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his task is to send the messenger. The, 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 the task of the messenger was to convey the message. Allah did what he uh, did. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fulfilled his, his task of sending the message. The Messenger وسلم, fulfilled his task and his mission by conveying the message to us. What does that leave the rest of us with? What is our task? What is our role in all of this? Our task and our role is to submit. That's it. Our role is to submit. The Sahaba and the Salaf, they understood this very clearly. Our role, the role of a Muslim, and that is the very meaning of a Muslim. A person who submits, a, a person who surrenders, not a person who objects, not a person who is constantly questioning. Our role is to submit. We hear what Allah has said, we submit. We hear what the Messenger has said, we submit, we surrender. We do not object. We do not question. Does that mean that you know uh, we are uh, blindly following? No. We should make our children understand 
that no, it does not mean that we are blindly following. We have answers to all the questions out there and all the doubts that are out there, the answers, we have it. We have the answers for that. But what it means is that we are not supposed to be uh, questioning and objecting uh, and constantly chasing after doubts because that will get us nowhere. Rather, it will lead us to further deviation. And so this is what I wanted to share with all of us today. Uh, I hope it was beneficial. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, protect each and every single one of us from uh, dangerous ideologies and especially atheism as it is uh, being promoted today. Uh, Jazakallah khair, Shaykhana. Assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah, it was a very good uh, session, uh, especially when you explained the people's point of view about uh, them trying to prove God's existence with uh, only science. Alhamdulillah, I, I think that was uh, very beneficial. Alhamdulillah, Jazakallah khair. Yeah, sir.